Hi, this is Eva for Once Upon a Timeline, and today I'm going to discuss changes in human brain morphology and what it might mean for human capabilities of the future. Okay, so let's get right into it. First, I'm looking at the brain from the top view, and from this angle, it looks very close to how it used to look. Uh, you can see there's a couple little pinches in the sides here that did not used to be there. And the other thing I noticed is that the divisions are they're a little bit more split apart than they used to be. The two halves of the brain used to mush up uh, very close to each other. They were just kind of slammed up, squished up next to each other. Um, now in the images I see kind of a strong division between them, like maybe the brain's a little more stiff or more um, delineated than it used to be. Okay, now we start to see some interesting stuff when we look at the side view. All right, in this image, the eyes would be up here, well, over here um, in the front. This is the frontal lobe, so it would be looking this way. And the first thing I notice, it's very obvious, is this giant flap here. Uh, the old brain did not have a big standing off flap form. It was just straight across on the bottom, just come around like a loaf. So this is one thing I noticed, and I saw this a um, year and a half ago when I first started looking at the brain when I first discovered the ME, and I, it was already there. I think it's gotten larger since then. Um, this is something that the brain changes are something that freaked me out a lot, and for whatever reason, I just really wasn't ready to deal with them. So although I looked at it a few times, I really didn't dig into it. But uh, now I'm going to. So I've done a bunch of research in the last few days. And um, so another thing I noticed here is there's a lot of labeled sulcuses and gyri. The, the gyruses are um, the raised areas. The sulcuses are the, or the sulci are the lower crinkled in areas. Um, there are a lot of labeled ones here. Um, I remember that we did have the sylvan fissure. That one I do recall, but none of these other, um, per, the central sulcus, the postcentral gyrus, lateral occipital gyri, um, I don't remember any of those. Um, what I remember is that each brain had its own folding pattern, and it was unique to the individual like fingerprints. And now apparently the old like fingerprints thing is an old wives tale. It is no longer true. Uh, brains have a standard folding pattern that they follow with only a little bit of variation. Apparently in a couple of places there are a couple of different variants between humans, but, but overall we all have the same folding pattern now. And in fact, if the folding pattern does not develop properly, you are born with mental retardation is the current storyline. So the folding pattern now is very much organized and decided upon, which is a complete Emmy for me. That, that used to be, they used to actually brag on how unique each individual was with the folding patterns. And also another thing I noticed is that the, the brain has just got less folds now. I mean, it looks a lot more like intestines to me. Uh, there used to be a lot more fine grain folding in here and uh, crinkling, it, it looked more like a broccoli. Uh, now it looks like an intestine. So that's, that's, I don't know what that means exactly, but it is interesting. Okay, so let's look at uh, some of the divisions of the brain here. The overall divisions are fairly similar, similar than they used to be. Frontal lobe, parietal lobe, occipital lobe, temporal lobe, cerebellum, spinal cord. Those are all the same general divisions that we used to have. Um, but one thing I noticed here, now if you look at this image, this image has the cerebellum on it. The one before did not. And this one, the cerebellum would sit back here. So one of the reasons that this brain doesn't look very different than you used to see, other than maybe this little temporal lobe flap sticking out, but it's close, is because now they're leaving off the cerebellum. The cerebellum used to be included in images of the brain. I mean, it is part of the brain. There's really no reason to leave it off. Um, but here you see there's the cerebellum sticking on there. And this is one thing that I really noticed even uh, a year and a half ago. The cerebellum now is huge. It's, it's huge. I can't believe how big it is. Uh, it just continually shocks me. I mean, this used to be a little thing that stuck on the brain stem. 
and the brain was kind of just over it. I mean, you didn't even see it in there. The brain would go straight across, and this was just kind of stuck up underneath the brain. It, it was like an afterthought. It, it was maybe 25% of the size it is now, just guessing. Um, so now it really sticks out. And one of the things when you look at a brain from the back is you see this now. I mean, you really see it. I'm going to look at some images here. Okay, here is the cerebellum, and you can see it used to just be up under the brain here. Um, now it sticks way down. Now the rest of the brainstem looks about right to me. I mean, maybe a little different, but not really anything you can really put my finger on. But the cerebellum is huge. And from this angle, it still looks about the same shape. But then when you look at it in the back, it's spread out now. I mean, cerebellum means little brain. And it used to be just kind of a lump under there. Um, it, it had a little bit of a bulge. But now it's spread out. Um, it's got all these lobes. It's got all these crinkles. I mean, it's crazy. This thing is way bigger and a lot more organized than it used to be. And I just can't stop looking at the images. Here is a, a front. This is actually from the front, so your eyes would be right in here in the front. And the, there's, there's the cerebellum hanging down in the back underneath the whole brain. Totally weird. There's another back view. Now, one thing I noticed about a year and a half ago when I was looking at brains from the back view is there was a straight shot across between the cerebellum and the brain. So there was like this giant straight line crinkle. And that really freaked me out because the brain didn't used to have a giant crinkle in the back. Well, I notice now that the crinkle has got sort of a more of a, a V-shaped angle to it. I cannot find any of those other images that I saw a year and a half ago. Big surprise. Okay, there's an actual real brain, supposedly, and there's the cerebellum back there. Um, you see just how it just doesn't look nearly as brothel-like as I recall. Let's see. Okay, so what does the cerebellum do? The cerebellum is interesting because it's responsible for um, fine motor skills. So if you are hitting a tennis ball or even just walking or playing a video game, it helps you control your muscles and your motor skills. Um, it, it Basically, it's kind of the athletic part. It, it, it handles all of that kind of a thing. There's been a lot of talk in, in, by a few individuals in the ME community that they feel that they have enhanced motor skills now. Um, the fact that the cerebellum is about three to four times larger than it ever was would explain that quite logically. Uh, I also feel that I have enhanced motor skills. Um, I just notice if something falls, I can just grab it really fast. Um, and, and, and it's not even a big deal. I can grab it and, and, heart, and still have attention on other things. And I just don't feel like I had that skill as much when I was younger as I do now. You know, usually your motor skills are supposed to get worse as you age. So there's really no reason for me to have improved in that department. Okay, so um, here they're talking about the different lobes of the cerebellum. Um, flocular, nodular lobe. And uh, all these different parts of the uh, brainstem, which kind of, I mean, the uh, cerebellum, which freaks me out. I mean, look, at it has tonsils now. Um, all this shape is just so wrong. I, it even has a fourth ventricle. A ventricle is the fluid-filled areas inside of your brain, and I do not remember there being a fourth ventricle. I'm really suspicious. I am sure that there was no fourth ventricle in the cerebellum. Um, I don't think there was one at all. I can't swear to it. I think it was just... They just had a third ventricle, and that's it. Um, here is another image that shows uh, this is from the back. So this shows the ventricles here. Uh, they're not the shape I remember, but I, I can't quite remember the exact shape that was in here. Um, but here's the fourth ventricle. that, And this whole beast in here is the cerebellum now. And there's the rest of the brainstem. So there's a, now a fourth ventricle in there, which I, I just, I, I can't. Get, I can't get over the look of the cerebellum now. It's one of the biggest changes for me. It's just giant. Um, in fact, I'm actually surprised that my motor skills haven't improved much more than they have. Uh, maybe we will get that down the line when we get more used to having this beast on the back of the head. But anyway, so yes, expect uh, enhancements in motor skills. Um, 
we have the technology for it back there now. So um, this is going to be part one. There's a lot of other brain changes that I can go over, and um, I'm going to do that in a separate one. It, otherwise, it's just too many photos, too much information. So that's it for this segment, and uh, this is Eva signing off for Once Upon a Time Now.